This is Palm Sunday. The affirmation this morning is, I am joy and filled with the light. So uh, we are joy. This is say, I am joy. And remember, every time you say I am in your life, you're creating something. So when you say I am sick, I am tired, I am, I am, I am, then you're claiming that in your life. And so what we do with affirmations is we make statements of spiritual reality that may not be totally manifest in your life, but through the use of the affirmations, you can begin to change your way of thinking in a positive, affirmative way. So if you're not filled with joy and light, then that affirmation says you are, but you haven't come to that understanding yet. And so that's the affirmation. The question this morning is, what do I celebrate? This is Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday in the traditional church, it is a celebration of the day when Jesus came into Jerusalem, the beginning of Holy Week, and uh, a series of events that takes place, and you know them uh, from Sunday school and from uh, the movies, the ten, you know, the movies that are about television and so forth. So this is uh, the beginning of the week in which Jesus was in uh, Jerusalem and uh, went from the happiness of today to the experiences that uh, are marked in the days ahead. And so this is a day of celebration and it's a day when he came into Jerusalem and he came amid celebration because he had done something. You know, he raised uh, someone from the dead which had really brought notoriety to him and There was a spontaneous, at least so it seems in scripture, there was a spontaneous celebration of his coming. And the celebration was for a variety of reasons, we won't go into those, and the traditional church tells us that there's a lot of theology in that. We don't have a theology, we don't have doctrine, and we don't have creed. So what we do is we look at the life and teachings of Jesus in a practical way, and then we examine that and apply it to our own lives. And so this is Uh, a day when we're looking at what happened in the life of this man that we call the Wayshore, and how does it apply to our lives, and what is the message that's there? The message uh, is kind of twofold, and it's very interesting because the very aspects of spirituality and scripture, if we look at them out of of the kind of uh, uh, theological purpose that they have, and look at them instead in the practical aspects of life, This week is a microcosm of the life of the wayshore Jesus Christ. In this week, he exemplifies in seven days what his whole life was about. And it is a whole spectrum of things. And we're going to talk about more of those next Sunday. And uh, so this week is Palm Sunday. So this week is a time of his coming into the city. And so it's a time of celebration. And, of course, we know that uh, Good Friday is coming up and uh, the events of Good Friday. So what do we see happening in this week? You see a beginning of celebration, and then as the week goes on, it gets worse and worse and worse, doesn't it? Pretty bad, it gets pretty bad. I mean, lots of horrible things happen. And if you wanna be graphic about it, terrible things happen. And so the, the week goes from celebration and happiness to being with his uh, followers and his, and his disciples and doing the celebration for the, uh, for the Passover that he was there for, and then it goes downhill. How many of you have had a week that goes downhill once in a while? How many of you have had a day that goes downhill once in a while? This week is about that. It's about the reality that life is made up of our celebrations, which are victorious and happy, and our defeats, which are difficult and hard. And so what's going to happen in this week? You know, put aside the theology just for a minute and the doctrine and the creed. It's all wonderful and it's nice. But for our purposes, this week is about the practical application of life. And as I said a moment ago, this week is a micro, this week is a review or a quiz that is given on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Because in the seven days you see it all. You see it all. And what you see is that he comes in in a time of celebration, and then you see a whole series of events, and we won't go into those today, but a whole series of events that bring death and destruction and separation and loneliness, and his, his, his immediate followers leave him, all of this and chaos in his life. And so in your life and in my life, how often do we have chaos? A lot. How many, how many times do things go when they're really good and then they're really bad and then we begin to say, what? Things like, why does this happen? We begin to look at our lives and we do all of this. But what do we know from new thought, from the practical spirituality we teach? No matter what is happening in your life, 
It is our ability to see beyond the appearances of the things that are happening to the reality of who and what we are. And so he does that so magnificently because on Palm Sunday, when he came into Jerusalem, everybody is celebrating probably in a spontaneous way. And yet the pictures that you see, you know, if you don't look at scripture, the pictures that you see of Jesus riding on the, on the donkey into Jerusalem, he is peaceful and serene in the midst of celebration. He's peaceful and serene at the Last Supper. He's peaceful and serene in, in Gethsemane. He's kind of going down this way and down this experience of being depressed and being concerned because of the fact that something really ominous and terrible is going to happen. And yet out of that prayer in Gethsemane, he comes up out of that thinking and he comes into Good Friday and into the experience uh, that takes place there. And then what happens on Easter Sunday? Next Sunday, we celebrate what? His resurrection, which is in a practical aspect, what we see is here's celebration, happiness, joy, everything's going well, he's on the top of the world, he's somebody that everybody loves, and then day by day he becomes less and less popular, even unto the fact that the people right around him that, care, that he cared about the most deserted him, and he's totally alone. And then he goes and gets tortured and killed, and yet, the constant picture that we see of him is one of serenity and peace. Why serenity and peace? Serenity and peace because the serenity and peace that he saw and that he demonstrated came from within him and the reality of the fact that he knew that whatever the experiences were, that his serenity and ability to deal with them in a positive and affirmative way, because he saw them the same. He saw the celebration the same, he saw the challenge the same, he saw the difficulties the same. And in every life, that's the circumstance, the situation. The question, what do I celebrate? What do you celebrate? You celebrate a birthday? You celebrate an anniversary? Sure. But how many times in your life do you celebrate? And we all need to celebrate a little bit more. Go have a party. Look at your life. And it's a wonderful opportunity because uh, today for Palm Sunday and uh, to look at the activity of what took place 2,000 years ago and look at your own life and my life and see the fact that the celebration is going to take place and yet in the face of that celebration, some and many negative things are going to happen. But from a practical standpoint, in your life and in my life, what happens when we celebrate? How do you feel when you celebrate? Great. great, you feel great. How do you feel when you're sad and depressed? And you feel like the world's against you and you don't know why this has happened and you don't know what you're gonna do and everything is bad and it's, the world is terrible. What, how do you feel then? Bad. And so if, if we celebrate more, what would happen? We'd feel better. And yet some of us, even when we celebrate, we can't celebrate. What happens? Somebody brings us a gift, we say, oh, you shouldn't have done that. You know, you, you invite some people to dinner, and you cook the dinner, and there you are at the table, and someone says, the food is tremendous. And what do you say? Oh, this? You know, somebody says your dress and outfit is magnificent. What do you say? Oh, no, 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 right? Do we celebrate? Look at your life. Look at the, the way that you live. How much do you celebrate? How much do you really celebrate? A celebration isn't just saying, oh, that's a good thing. It's something to really celebrate. Do something and express it to someone else and share it with someone else and be good at receiving as well. And so we, we should celebrate every time that we can because as we celebrate, we remind ourselves of the good in life. And it's so easy for us to follow and see the good when we are in good times. And I guarantee you that all of the times will not be good. So if we can get good at being happy and celebratory in the celebrating times, we can then call ourselves into a different way of thinking when the challenges of difficulty come. Christ Jesus did that. He came into Jerusalem today amid happiness and joy, and he was serene and peaceful. Be peaceful and serene. What's the affirmation this morning? When are we joy and filled with light? Always, despite appearances to the contrary. And what does our faith tell us? to see beyond appearances. And what else does our faith tell us? Thoughts in mind create after their kind. So if you celebrate, 
What kind of thoughts are you going to create? And what kind of life are you going to create? So thoughts in mind. The foundation teachings are the dynamic power of living in a positive and affirmative way. And we say, I am happy. I am healthy. I am prosperous, despite appearances the contrary. So I am happy even in my sorrow. I am healthy even in my sickness. And I am prosperous even in my limit and poverty. The good news is that you and I are joy and filled with light. The good news is that you and I are created in the likeness and image of our creator. The good news is that you and I are empowered and gifted and blessed beyond our imagination. And that we are called to be like him, to be like him and to do the things that he did. And that's what new thought is about. That's what practical spirituality is about. It's about being like him. And if we can be like him, then we can be joy and filled with light. And we can celebrate so many, many things. Mm -hmm.